Applied Architect and co-founder of Sun Structures Architects. He's been designing energy efficient passive solar buildings since the mid 70s. And his early work includes the Up Upland Hills Awareness Center. And he's done countless passive solar houses in Michigan. His more recent projects include the Leslie Science Nature House and Michigan's first two co-housing communities, Sunward and Great Oak. Current projects include two straw bale residences and the Parsons Center, a multidisciplinary environmental center for Eastern Mich Michigan University. So. I'm also on the Ann Arbor Energy Commission and we're working on 30% uh, renewables for the uh, municipal government by 2010 and 20% uh, of the entire community by 2015, which is a real challenge. Uh, the two buildings up there. That's the 5,300 square foot straw bale building on the top and the, the bottom is actually uh, my house, which is a conversion from an old 60s ranch house that had the garage on the south side. So it was like the perfect solar project when we started, but uh, we added stuff on both sides and, and a lot of solar gain and made it energy efficient. Well, it just so happens I admit it. Or at least architects are, or builders are, because buildings are responsible for the largest portion of uh, CO2 gas emissions. They're also, uh, of the three um, uses, they're uh, the ones that last the longest and are the most difficult to change. So it's re we've really got our work cut out for us. LEED is uh, a wonderful thing and, and, and a not so wonderful thing. It's uh, been really great to um, get a lot of architects involved in green building and a lot of people who build buildings uh, involved in green building. But um, everybody now thinks if you do LEED, you're all done. And the problem is, LEED deals with a lot of things very well, but energy is third on the list instead of top on the list, and the numbers don't necessarily uh, work out quite so well. If you look, there's a couple of problems. One of the other problems is if you look at 2006, there were 240 cert certified buildings in LEED, and there were 170,000 buildings built in the United States in that year. Um, so we're doing uh, less than two-tenths of a percent. We've got to do better than that, and it's basically a little bit too cumbersome. Uh, and there's another problem. Here's a LEED building uh, that's going to be built in Boston, climate similar to ours, guess what? It's all glass. It's not very energy efficient if it's all glass. Uh, and yet, it's going to have a lead rating. If you look at it, here's a study where they looked at how the energy efficiency of, of lead buildings worked out over uh, what they expected. The um, angled line there is what they expected, and you can see there's some that did better and about as many that did worse including the ones at the bottom here that don't even meet code. And here's, these are gold and platinum buildings, and they did the simulations and somehow it didn't work out the way they had planned. Here's the lead platinum building, and in all the mags, it was, I think it was one, the first lead platinum building. Uh, it's out on the east coast in Chesapeake Bay, and yet uh, it's using almost twice as much energy as they predicted. And there's this problem. Anybody know what's wrong with that picture? Well, this is the south side of the building. These are passive solar gain windows, probably too many of them. These are P this is a PV array. Anybody know what's wrong with that? Well, PV arrays cannot be shaded to any great degree. So this is the results. When NRAIL went back and looked at the building, they've got less than half of what they predicted they were going to get out of that PV array. So, We've got to not do stupid things. <laughs> a, a better measure is Architecture 2030, which is a program that was started by Edward Masria, who um, did the Passive Solar Home Book back in the 70s and is really an inspiration to all of us. And basically, he's saying that we've got to reduce our consumption by 50% now with all new buildings and uh, reduce an equal number of existing buildings by 50% today and then scale it up 
basically reduce the consumption uh, of buildings as we go to the point that we're carbon neutral by 2030. Recent um, outputs from IPCC and various other places and our oil situation means that that's probably not even fast enough. Um, Repower America is talking about actually converting over to 100% green electricity within 10 years, and that's probably closer as to what we really need to do to combat climate change. So now I'm going to go through a couple of projects. Several of these are not mine, uh, but I thought that they were um, good examples as to what's possible. <clears throat> Existing buildings, why do we need to deal with them? There's a lot of them around, and they don't perform very well energy-wise. So we have all these older homes that uh, use a lot of heat, and uh, a small number of, I mean, this, this is 2000. I'm afraid to look at what 2008 might be. It's probably, uh, might be imperceptible on there. Um, another thing that happened uh, is that although we improved our, uh, the energy efficiency of housings from the 70s, you can see that blue line is, is going down. We increased the size of, our house, size of our houses, and as a result, the energy that each household is using is greater, even though we've made the buildings a little bit more energy efficient. Uh, this is a house in Toronto, a little 1,200 square foot World War II house, one of those real leakers that there's about a million of these in Canada and probably a couple of million in the United States. And they made this and that zero energy house. So this is what they did. They started off as they insulated the envelope. They put what they call Larson trusses around the outside of the house. And, and the people continued to live in the house the whole time that they did this, by the way. So they took the siding off and, and put vertical trusses around the outside of the house and then foamed the house on the outside, put new windows in, put the siding back on, added insulation in the roof, um, added insulation around the basement, improved the heating system, and then add solar photovoltaic and solar thermal on the roof and basically got it down to being climate neutral. But the problem is, look at the costs. This works out that that should be $70 per square foot uh, of floor area. So it's pretty expensive. Uh, you're not going to get eight and a half year payback on this. Um, but um, the $55,000 isn't too bad, especially if we can figure out how to do it for two-thirds of the cost or half of the cost that might actually return on investment. The PV and the solar uh, thermal are, are going to come down in cost as time goes on. But this shows you that you can take an old house and make it pretty much a uh, net zero energy house um, for a price. And in Europe, they're doing this. Here's a, a multifamily house, um, multifamily residential building that they took. And they put insulation on the outside, put new windows in, sealed the whole thing up. Uh, did the whole round to it and, and uh, reduced the energy consumption. It's the red on the left is, is what it started out at is, and the red on the right is the heating when you got through and it went from 200 units down to 25 units. Now in new homes, uh, there's a, a really aggressive program called the Passive House Program which started in, in Europe and it's been around for about 10 years and they basically um, took the super insulation techniques from the 70s, updated them to today, uh, figured out how to get rid of most of the thermal leaks uh, where we had straight through uh, wood members and such, and got the um, heating load of the building down to the point that the airflow through the air-to-air -air heat exchanger, which you need when you've made the building that tight, uh, if you just simply put some heat into that airflow, you can heat the building. So you don't need a heating system other than the air-to-air -air heat exchanger that you have to put in anyways, which is pretty amazing. And I think this is where we really need to go. Uh, here's a cute little uh, one in Switzerland. That's actually a straw bale building. And they use large straw bale. And they have a, a good solar exposure, obviously, and, and a lot of reflected light off the snow. Um, but they have an R113 wall because it's a 48-inch straw bale. And uh, it actually, because it's a small building, it's like 10% of the passive house, which is really amazing. So it's possible.